Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A quick info before we begin. Today's video has two stories and both of them have updates. Now let's get started with the first one. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user effing roommates suck. Me, 34 female, with my roommate, 34 female, of 11 months. Is she a mooch or am I ungrateful? Hello Reddit, I could really use some perspective here. About a year ago, my ex-husband and I separated. We eventually divorced about 8 months ago and we have two very small children. During our separation, 10 months ago, an old friend, Maggie, that is a preschool teacher, contacted me and asked me if she could live with me for a while. Her boyfriend and her broke up and she needed to find somewhere fairly quickly to stay. I thought that this might be a good thing. We were both going through a breakup, we could both benefit from a friend, etc, etc. So I told her that was fine. The plan was that she was only going to live with me for three months. She would help me with cleaning and help make dinner. She would watch the kids when I needed her to. In return, she would live with me without paying rent. I know being a teacher, she doesn't make a lot, so I thought I'd help her by letting her save up some money and that it was a fair trade. Anyway, she moved in and it was fine. I liked having her around. It was fun. Shortly after she moved in though, my ex-husband and I had a huge falling out and it got really ugly. Like, protection orders ugly. It was really hostile between my ex and me, so when the time came for Maggie to move out, she kind of stayed and I didn't really care. I really needed the support system. And now, in the past 6 months, my ex and I resolved our issues and it's all good. We function really well. I've been dating and just doing my thing. But Maggie is still here with no signs of ever leaving. On top of her not moving out, she's not contributing to the household like she was supposed to. She never cleans. When I asked her about that, she said she cleans all day at school and doesn't feel like it at night or on the weekends. She never cooks. She never told me before she moved that she does not know how to cook. I'm not picky either. She literally would not even heat up frozen chicken. She asks me to do it. She does not watch my kids, but this is mostly because I don't need her to. I go out when my kids are with her dad. She is living in my kid's playroom and gets pissed when toys are left out and lashes at my 5 year old. 50% of the room is not for use because she has her stuff in there. 80% of my basement is all her stuff, her school stuff, her stuff. I want to renovate my basement but can't with all of her stuff everywhere. She literally threw her stuff on the floor. Her cat has peed on clothes in the laundry room because she only changes the litter once a month. She is terrible at feeding him too. She'll come home from work and just eat whatever I made for dinner. She has never contributed to the food bill but will gladly eat whatever I make. She has announced twice that she is having a dinner party and I need to make all the food. This includes buying all the food. She offered to paint rooms in my house. She has completed one room and two others have been half done for months. Whenever she comes with me and my kids for whatever adventure, if we stop to eat, I'm always footing the bill for her too. I also have an ex-boyfriend that I was seeing for a short time. We didn't work out as a couple, but we're now friends with benefits. Well, she does not like him because he is kind of loud and can be obnoxious and he totally is, but I like him and I enjoy his company. Anyway, a few weeks ago he came over after my kids were asleep and we were chilling watching something and talking about it. At 1 a.m. she came out of her bedroom and started yelling, It's time for bed and you need to leave now. I was like, no. And she was like, can I talk to you privately? I again said, no, we aren't being loud. She then started going on and on about how I wasn't making good choices for my body. I was like, what the F? We are on the couch talking quietly. We aren't being loud. And she got pissed off and stomped away. The next day, I didn't have my kids, so he came over and we hung out in my room. Hers is on the first floor and mine is on the second. Anyway, I told her he was coming over and she just kept saying, Don't do it, I hate him, I don't like it when he's over. He came over anyway and left around 3am. The next day, she wouldn't talk to me because he spent the night and that wasn't a good choice for my body. I had to listen to her for the next three days talk about how much she hated my friend. 
For what it's worth, he doesn't even talk to her aside from saying hello. He knows how she feels about him. Anyway, this is getting really long, I apologize. I told her six weeks ago that I could no longer afford to have her live with me and not pay rent, not pay for food or utilities. I told her that she would need to start paying me $600 a month and she was no longer welcome to eat food that I purchased and prepared. She gave me a check for $600 last month, but nothing for this month. I feel like she is a mooch and is really overstepping her boundaries. My friend thinks she's a psycho, my ex-husband thinks she really needs some mental help and I am enabling her. I seriously felt bad for her because of her breakup and I know that teachers salaries are pretty crappy so I thought I was helping her out. But now I feel like she's trying to parent me and be my child. Reddit, am I just crazy or is this girl effing crazy and a mooch? Well Opie, this girl is definitely a mooch, I don't know about her mental state but it doesn't seem stable and you're a pushover. I was kind of thinking you were just too much of a nice person to say or do anything but the fact that she announced twice that she would have dinner parties and that you needed to pay and prepare the meals, well then yeah, if you did that, you're definitely a pushover and she's taking advantage of you. So if I was in your shoes OP, I would give her, I don't know how much time you need to give her to evict her, but I would give her the minimum amount of time possible to get her out of my house. I mean at this point I would assume you're kind of running out of patience and empathy because let's face it, she is taking advantage of you and you're letting her do it. She's not following through on anything that she should be doing based on your agreement. You let her live with you rent free for months and she never contributed. She was just another dependent. OP, get rid of her. This is a user, not a friend. And what do you guys think OP should do in this situation? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Junksman1 says, give her a written notice to leave. If she doesn't leave, then evict her. You should speak briefly with a local lawyer to make sure the notices are correct and what the procedures are for eviction. Call a couple of lawyers and discuss this with them and ask them what they'd charge for this with one fee for reviewing or preparing the initial notice and a quote on what they'd charge if you need to evict her. You can't afford not to do this. Quote, twice she has announced that she is having a dinner party and I need to make all the food. This includes buying all the food. End quote. So when she did this, did you say no? Or did you say okay and buy and make all the food for her? Stop letting this freeloader walk all over you. Don't let her stay if she pays rent. Just tell her it is time to go. Vile Bunny says she is a horrible person. Her ex broke up with her because she's a horrible person who doesn't want a relationship. She wants a slave or a 1950s housewife. She's putting in zero effort and actually hostile towards at least one of your kids. I would never leave them alone with her because who knows what she'd be comfortable doing without you present. Also, you can get a bacteria eater for pet stains and spray any affected surfaces, including the laundry before you wash it, and get rid of the cat pee odor. Teresa JS says, give her 30 days written notice to vacate. Also, stop feeding her at all. Ginger Elvis, what? Says, you can just say no when she asks you to make her food. When she helps herself to your family's meal, say no. When she asks you to cater her party, say no. When you go out with her and your family, get separate bills. When you do groceries, ask her to contribute financially. You need to learn how to set boundaries. That being said, it sounds like she needs to go. And Dr. Leo Spichemen. This is Dr. Leo Spichemin. Says she needs to be gone. Her behavior is so far beyond inappropriate, it's not even funny. Give her the legally required amount of time as a tenant to secure a new residence, but she absolutely must leave. All right, well, the community agrees. The friend, or actually the mooch, needs to leave. And unfortunately, OP did not reply to any comments, so we have no additional context. Which means we move on straight to the update to see what happened next and how the story ends. But of course, before that, you know that here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with the update. So I honestly didn't think I would be giving an update so quickly, but here it goes. After I posted, she just kind of avoided me for a few days, coming home really late and just laying in her bed when she was home. 
I was getting to the point where I was just going to tell her to move out via Facebook. Anyway, last Wednesday, my friends with benefits that she hates came over and he stayed the night. We just hung out in my room and in the morning, we got up when my kids did and got them ready for school and whatnot. So, my kids are normal kids. They are sometimes loud, they like toys that make noises, whatever, keeps them occupied while I'm trying to get their lunch together and get a shower, etc. Now, my ex-husband, the week prior, had bought my oldest a toy blaster gun that makes noises when you pull the trigger, and although annoying, they love it. So, on Thursday morning, my kids were playing nothing super loud, but that doesn't matter. It's their house and they can be loud. We were about to leave to take them to school when I was just grabbing my coffee and wallet and stuff when Maggie came storming out of her room and made a very loud growl and stomped around to grab a bag. That silenced everyone and we all stared at her. I asked her if she was running late or something and she screamed no at me. I was like, okay, whatever and kept getting my stuff together. My youngest, which is two, started playing with the gun when she threw open her bedroom door and charged at my two-year-old screaming, no, 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 give me that, and proceeded to pull it out of his hands aggressively and ran back into her room. We left to get everyone to school, but at that point, I was like, done. She started texting me that my friend gives her PTSD and she can't sleep when he's here. So weird, my friend doesn't speak to her with the exception of hello, of which she just growls at him. In other words, he has never been violent, abusive, or aggressive in any way with her. I let her say her piece about how she hates my friend and that when my oldest was saying his name to ask him a question, that was stressing to her. I calmly responded that my house was no longer a good fit for her, that I would not shut my kids up in their home and I would not tolerate anyone approaching or touching them in an aggressive or intimidating manner and I would invite whoever I wanted to my house. At that point, she started backpedaling, of course, that she was just emotional because her period was starting, so I just told her that I understood, but she would need to consider this her 30-day notice and she would need to be moved out by the end. When I got home that night, she packed a bunch of stuff and stormed off, and I didn't see her until last night. She came back and packed up her clothes and cat and stuff. All that she left was her bed and her school materials. So it looks like she's leaving and I deposited a check she gave me for half of this month's rent. After she left, I went into the room and it was so effing disgusting. She left garbage all over and she left dishes along the side of her bed. My foot stuck to the floor because it was covered in cat puke. There's cat fur everywhere in the room. I started trying to clean it up, but the combination of fur and dust started to bother me, so I can do it in short intervals, but it will get done. I am still charging her rent and will continue to do so until she moves out all of her crap. I'm also going to have to change the locks since she made copies of my house keys without my permission. I'm thinking of sending her a cleaning bill, but I will probably just cut my losses and move on and focus on getting my house put back together. This morning, my oldest said to me, thank you so much, mommy, for getting my playroom back. I missed my toys. So I know I made a good decision. I have also decided to get into therapy because I obviously have issues with being a doormat and enabling people because I'm too nice and I want to change those behaviors. So I have made some calls out to a few therapists and hopefully I'll get something scheduled in the next week or so. I thought about writing her an email that outlines all the issues with overstepping her boundaries and whatnot, and I wrote it but didn't send it. She will not see those as her issues and will just fall on deaf ears, so I'll just leave her hating me because I'm not losing any sleep over it and I don't really care. She wasn't a friend and is just mad because I won't enable her anymore. So far, our weekend has been awesome. My kids are in their playroom playing and I'm drinking my coffee trying to figure out what I want to do with the rest of our Sunday. Well, OP, I guess all that there's left to say is good riddance. And yeah, you keep charging her rent until she moves everything out. Apart from that, here's wishing you and your family the best in the future. Thanks so much for sharing, OP, and take care. Now, let's move on to the next post that, like I said in the beginning, also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Deleted. 
I, 25 female, think my boyfriend, 31 male, is trying to train me? Two years. I don't even know what this is, sorry if this sounds disorganized, but he's literally in the bed beside me right now and I'm losing my mind. He has a habit of discouraging me from doing things he dislikes. Not by pointing it out to me, but by physically stopping me. For example, he hates that I bite my nails and to discourage me, he slaps my hands out of my mouth. This is weird, right? I didn't notice how much he did this until he was visiting for my birthday and I had made popcorn so we could watch Stranger Things on Netflix. I eat quickly, I always have. He decided I was eating the popcorn too fast and smacked my hand away and snapped, slow down. Like, what? It's the popcorn I paid for and made for us. It's my effing birthday tomorrow, let me eat popcorn. I feel embarrassed and sad and kind of stunned. I stopped eating it all together because I was self-conscious and he didn't even eat hardly any of it. He wasn't worried I would leave him any, he just didn't like the way I ate it. What the F? I've sat and thought about this and realized he does this all the time. He tries to grab my e-cig because he doesn't like it. He tells me off and smacks my hand away if I eat snacks too quickly. He slaps my hands out of my mouth if I'm biting my nails and calls me disgusting. I get that these could be annoying habits, but am I wrong to be hurt by how he decides to go about telling me? I've never had any partner take issue with my mannerisms before. I feel like a dog. What do I do here? Well, Opie, regardless if he believes or you believe that these habits are annoying, and some of them are like the nail biting, but that's because it's unhealthy. I don't mind not putting down my burger until I finish it because I always get messy. But regardless of this, this is no way to treat a partner, no way to treat people in general. You just don't go smacking hands away. Like you say, he shouldn't do this. He should be able to tell you if he doesn't like it, and then you see what you're gonna do. In my opinion, this could be between a orange or a red flag because the depending on the individual, it could become aggressive. And then we're not talking about hand smacking. OP, if I was in your situation, I would definitely take a long, hard look at my relationship and my partner because the way he's treating you is at a minimum highly disrespectful. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Spoonbills says, he's hitting you out of irritation. At best, it's incredibly disrespectful. At worst, well, he's hitting you already, so... Cygnus Zero Star says, I can't help but comment that approximately two years is a very typical timeline for abusive tendencies to come out. Your boyfriend, at the very least, is being disgustingly disrespectful. This is the part where you have to ask yourself if this is a brand new behavior or if he's tried to be controlling of things he doesn't like about you in the past. Perhaps not as severely. If my husband started doing this, I would insist we see a neurologist immediately because that's so far out of the range of normal and healthy that I would be convinced that he had a tumor or something if he did it. This is not normal. This is not acceptable. Respect yourself and act accordingly. And OP responds, see, it's been happening for a while now. It's weird, but I just kind of overlooked it until now. I guess I thought that maybe it was annoying and I should stop rather than maybe this is a totally inappropriate way of stopping bad habits. It absolutely is. Bouncy Bouncy Bounce says, I find it very easy to live by this rule. The first time a partner hits you, including smacking your hand, should be the last time. The moment his hand is applied to your body in an intentional and negative way, the relationship is over. You're not a dog and this is not even an appropriate way to train a dog. Get out before it gets worse. Additional information from OP's comments. We have had several chats about significant issues in our relationship that are unrelated to this. I have no kind of disorder where I would injure myself with fidgeting. I'm not wrong to be annoyed when food is slapped out of my hands because it's unusual and I was distressed last night. I asked Reddit for advice. Obviously, I need to have a conversation along the lines of stop. There have been occasions where I told him to stop smacking my hands away. These have been ignored. The slapping or smacking of my hands is not particularly painful, but it isn't comfortable and rude. I have never once told them, please stop me from nail biting or eating too quickly, etc. Obviously, it's subjective. It's my account of what I feel is an issue in our relationship. 
All right, well, the community agrees that this is absolutely disrespectful behavior to OP and that she should definitely address it, either by talking to him or by ending the relationship. So let's move on to the update to see what OP did. So it's been a while since I last posted, but a few people had asked for an update, so here we are. I read your posts and sat on it for a few days. I knew I had to break up with him, but I wanted to talk to my family first. I went to Portugal with them to a family wedding and it was beautiful and exactly what I needed to clear my head. Alcohol, son and my giant Catholic family. I talked to my mom and dad and they were both shocked. They asked if he had hurt me physically and fortunately I was able to answer no honestly. They said to use the long weekend away to really think about what I wanted and it was great advice. I watched my cousin and his fiancée getting married in the most beautiful ceremony and realized I'd never have this type of relationship with my now ex-boyfriend because it wasn't just slapping things away from me, it was constant criticism. I was never really relaxed around him. He would get crappy when I was too affectionate, he asked more than a quick hug or a pick on the lips. He would criticize what I was wearing, my job, my house, everything was under constant scrutiny. But when I would ask for verbal affection, he would just say, oh, that's hard for me. One time he laughed in my face when I tried to initiate sex and I cried myself to sleep. I should have dumped him after that. So I got home and broke up with him. Unfortunately, I had to do it over the phone due to distance and that even if I had traveled to his house, I wouldn't have wanted to do it with his parents there. We talked and I linked him to the last post because I had everything in written there and I wanted him to read the responses. He made so many excuses and promises that it would never happen again and I'm not anyone from your past, referring to my abusive ex-boyfriend. I feel like not hitting me hard does not excuse raising your hands to me for constant criticism or for withholding affection after many conversations. I stayed firm and the relationship is over and it's honestly for the best. It sucked super hard for a few days before I stopped myself from wallowing and got on with my life, which has been great again. I've started seeing someone who is in the same career as me, so he gets that we both could travel away from each other and I think I'm moving to London for two years in January, which is like a dream come true. So anyway, I just wanted to say thanks for the advice and for knocking some sense into me. I think I need to learn a bit more about what is acceptable in a relationship, but I have plenty of time to do that. Opie's edit. I just wanted to say that the number of supportive messages I have received both on this post and on the last has been overwhelming. Also, all the anti-nail biting advice. Thanks, I'm working on it. It's been an eye-opening experience and I'm glad that I had so many wonderful people here offering their encouragement. Thank you for everything. Well, OP, good for you on the decision that you made and on standing strong. So here's wishing you the best in London. Take care, OP, and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.